This is code.org and this is hackathon. So ready to build something with variables, function calls, events, iteration, lists. Are you scared yet? We can do this. I'm going to walk you through building out my own basic app that meets many of these requirements. And I'm excited to hear about all the cool stuff that you build. If you're scared, stop it. And uh, let's get to work. Let me show you what my app's about. I'm going to be building out a volcano app. Hit start. All right, I'm going to enter an elevation and it's going to output all of the volcanoes that have a higher one. Oh, that's too big. 550. Once I click off, it automatically on change updates my list to all of these volcanoes. Whoa, that's a big list. I want a smaller one. Okay, new number. Click off. Oop, getting smaller. All right. Let's see. How about that tall? lot less. So what we're doing here is having it update live. We're using lists, a name list and a number list. I'm using a for loop to iterate through. I'm using whatever data I have here, volcanoes. Maybe you use something else, maybe the Netflix one or something in the science category. And this filtering that I'm doing will work on a whole bunch of things, any number, any year, any height, the Netflix release dates, whatever you want. I'm excited to hear what you guys built with this, but let me dive into how I built mine. And here we are. Mine is obviously about volcanoes, 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 volcanoes. That being said, I'll first start off with a plug for the hackathon project planning guide. You want to do this, you want to know what you're using. Originally, I was thinking of using the volcano data set. So that's what I wrote here. I said what parts of that data set I would use. Now, keep in mind, filtering, use a list from one column to determine information that will be filtered from a list created by another column. And that's going to be the most common approach to this application. Now, for a map, that's going to be adding and changing and reduce. That might be looking for the greatest release. Make sure you go into detail, though. Also, right here, this paper prototype, it's super important. If you make a bazillion dollars at Google, when you're first designing an app, they're going to have you sit down and draw this out so your team knows what's going on and so you know what they're thinking as well. Keep in mind these arrows show from one screen to another how you get around. Do not have dead ends. A dead end app is an issue. You should always be able to get to other screens from each screen. Now, your element IDs are important. Make sure they're descriptive, right? So I have a start button. I call the start button. Elevation input, elevation input, so on and so forth. Variables all have elevation. Uh, Boolean values are just true false statements. So I'm going to check how high a volcano is. All right. That being said, I want to dive into my actual app, data. I want to point out I am starting with a number. So what I want to do is the volcano one. And boom. Now, what you want to do, I have no idea. But how this could work is I'm going to look at my volcano stuff. I'm going to be using the elevation. I'm going to ask the user to enter a number. And whatever number they enter, I'm going to show them the volcanoes that are bigger than that number. OK, so how you could do that is maybe you have them enter a. Oh. Um, a culture of, I don't know, Netflix content. You have them enter a year and you show them any movie that's greater or that was released after that year. Right. So I'm using user input to push something to the screen. So I'll do volcanoes with elevation, but it would work with a year or something was released. Uh, I don't know. What is this? 500 albums. Oh, look, is this going to have a year again? Yep. So they're going to enter a number. I'm going to output all of the items that have a number greater than that. So again, though, I'll be using the Volcano Eruptions data set. All right. Now, I'm going to start with just the basics of design here. Uh, app title. And I'm going to say Volcano. That doesn't look right. You're going to see my spelling skills here. There we are. Volcano app. I'm creative. Uh, do they have red? No. Ooh, I like this. Oh, that looks kind of mean, though. Eh, that's kind of boring. I'm going to get all picky on you. No. It's not going to be peachy. Peachy. No. I don't know why I started looking at this. Nope. Nope. That doesn't look... Ugh. Uh, uh, fine, forest. I'm bitter about this. All right, volcano app and no, that's so ugly. I hate it. Oh, okay. I'll do this. Volcano app and mine's gonna be uh, 36. Wow, that's cool. 
Okay, and this will just be my start screen. So I'm gonna throw an image, shoes, icon. I think they have a world. Yep, globe. We and maybe I call this start IMG, and then I want a button. Ooh, I even like the coloring on it. I could change it if I want, but I won't. And my button's gonna be oh start BTN and start. All right, maybe I increase the font size. You get the idea. Pada. Now I need to. I want this screen to be named something else, so I know what it is. And I'm gonna drag out a screen and drop, and this will be a main screen. Cool. All right. Now on this main screen, I'm gonna have a few things. I'm gonna have a label and main label, I guess. Volcano, awesome. This is my main label. Critical information there. And let's center that. Boom. All right. So volcano awesome as it is is mine. And then I want to ask a quest. No, I don't want a button. I want to ask a question. And my question, well, kind of. It's going to be a demand. Uh, I'm just going to call this a num label because they're going to be entering a number. So num label enter an elevation because I'm having them enter an elevation and I'm going to show them volcanoes that are at that elevation or higher. Or I could show them Netflix shows that are at that year or higher. All right. Enter an elevation, something like this. Now, I need to make sure they have a text input to enter it. So drop, and I'll call this uh, num input. And I'll leave its placeholder empty. I could throw some numbers in there if I wanted as an example. Um, I'm actually not going to have a submit button, and I'll show you why in a little bit. But then we need a text area. And what this is, it's where that information that they put in here actually gets pushed out to. Text input is for them to enter stuff, right? This is a text input. That's where they put stuff. Text area is what I just used, and we push stuff into that. So I'm going to say um, output box or maybe output put area. All right. And I'm going to just make sure this font's larger so when we do use it, we can read it. All right. Now, headed back to the code. I need a few things to start us off. With a simple app, I'm going to do var. I can go into box. Oh, let me delete that. Now let me go into Vox. I'm going to do a var and a var. What I want to do with this is now my data set is volcano eruptions. So I want to know the volcano's name and I'm going to want to know the elevation. And again, if you're doing Netflix and you're filtering years of shows or you're doing anything else, songs and you're filtering years or songs and you're filtering plays, you would want to grab the song name and the number of plays. But I'm going to grab the volcano name and the elevation. So let me head back to the code. And all right, I have this empty variable right now. I'm going to call this um, name list and then I'm going to call this num list, which isn't that descriptive. I should probably say elevation, but it lets me know what it is. All right. And then the data. Boom and boom. What do I want? OK, well, my git column I'm going to choose. I imported my volcano eruptions. And again, if you don't see yours there, that's because you need to go to data. You need to pick one and then hit import. All right. So this is going to be my volcano eruptions and I'm going to choose volcano name. Nums list. OK, well, I'm going to choose my volcano eruptions and then I'm going to choose the elevation because that's what I'll be using. All right. And now I want to go ahead and use on event. So let's go take a look. I have a start screen like I showed you. So I would go into UI controls. I'm going to enter some spacing here just so it's easier to read, but you don't need this. All right, I'm going to go into uh, UI controls and do an on event. And when, let me hover over my start button. Oh, yeah, I called it start button. So on the event, start button is clicked. What do I want to occur? Hmm. Well, when it's clicked, I want to go to my next scene. So let me scroll down here and see. Ah, yeah, set screen, right? We're going to want to change the screen. So I'm going to want to change the screen to what? Well, 
main screen is what I called that. And again, in design mode, that's where you can change your screen name. All right, main screen, set screen, main screen. All right, so that should work now. If I hit run, I hit start, boom. By the way, if you hit run and you don't go to your first screen, you can always, always, always in design mode, go to whatever you want your first screen to be. Say I wanted it this, which I don't. I would click default and now boom. However, I want it to be the start screen, make default, and that will be the start. So now that I have my start working, I need to grab some input from our user. So again, I wanna do something on user input. So on the event, right? When something happens is when I want it to occur. Now, what I would do in my app, and this is my app, right? You're gonna be making your own app, your own version. But for mine, I named my num input. So num input. Click, no, since this is a text area, I'm going to do on change. So whenever they enter a number, this is going to update down here. That being said, you could also do a button below this if you wanted, like this, and say when the user clicks this button, this will update. That's not how I'm doing it, but I'm saying you could. So num input on change. Now, what do I want to do? Well, the second this changes, I'm going to use a function just to kind of keep this neat and tidy. So right here, I'll drop a function and my function will be um, uh, user input maybe, something like that, all right? So we know the user's done something. First, I'm gonna grab this, var x equals blank. What did I call this? Num input, perfect. So I'll call this variable, hmm, why don't we just call it num? So my variable num is gonna be equal to I need to grab the text from this text input box, right? So there's not a grab function, right? You can't grab text, but hopefully you're screaming at your computer, you can get it. And that's what I wanna do. I want my var num variable to be equal to whatever get text is about to grab for me. It's about to grab this. Boom, and I call that num input. So I now have, when this function runs, a new variable num, and it's gonna be equal to whatever number the user is entering. All right, well, that's great. Now what do I want? Well, like I said, I wanna search for my list for a volcano that has elevation greater than that. So I now need a for loop. I'm going into control here and dropping this. What a for loop does, is right now for var i is equal to zero. So I'm making this loop that says I have a variable named i and it is equal, well, to zero. i is gonna keep counting up until i is no longer less than four. i plus plus means add one to i each time. Just to prove my point on this, guys, I'm gonna throw in a council log, which we'll print out down here. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna get rid of all this because it's a variable, i, and I'm gonna run. Oh, I never used, we have to call our function, by the way. So I'll just put right above this a function call to test this out. Boom, see? And it starts at zero because right here I say i is equal to zero. i plus plus each time, so it adds one to i each time. Zero, one, two, three. And then on that last time when i would be equal to four, it's done. And if there was code beneath this, it would run that code. All right, so now that you see this, I also want to show you while we're at it, let's go ahead and use another council log and say, um, what was my list? Names list, I think. I And list, do this weird thing, or arrays, do this weird thing, it's just name, I guess, where they start with index zero as well. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so at zero, when you make a list in code, your first index of your list is zero, this sounds so weird. Your second index is one. Yo, what, what's an index? Oh, an index is each point in your list. So, for instance, if I had a list in my code of these names, which hint I do, this says one because it's the first item in the list. The computer for an index for this would say zero because this is the first item. The computer starts counting at zero. It's strange, but it does. All right, so this is the second item in the list, so this says two, but the computer would say this is at index one. 
because the first thing's at index zero, this is at index one, this is an index two, even though it's the third item, so on and so forth. So if I say names list I, it's gonna print off the thing at index zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, and then velocity, I can't pronounce that. Well, look, zero or one, if we're counting normally, two, three, four. It grabs those first four. Perfect. That's what we need it to do. Except I wanna look for a volcano that has a elevation greater than the one the user entered. So that's an if statement, right? So let me go into controls, if. So now I'm gonna say if num is, let's use the block, sometimes they're easier to see, I know. If num is less than or equal to, so if num is less than or equal to what? Well, I'm using my volcano list. So I wanna know if it's less than or equal to this number in the num list. So num list i, all right? So I have two lists, keep in mind, names list and nums list. They're two separate lists, but again, if I look at my data, okay, whatever is at index zero, for instance, like I was just saying, that's the first thing. That's the West whatever. So the West Eiffel is at index zero of the names list. You know what's at index zero of the elevation list? Well, the elevation for the West Eiffel, right? My names list, index one is chain, ya yeah, 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 yeah. Index one of my elevation list must be the elevation of that volcano, okay? So on and so forth. So I'm using these two lists. I made two of them for a reason because I'm going to check the elevation from the number list. And if that elevation is greater than what the user entered, I'm going to grab the name of that volcano from the names list. So here we are. If num is less than or equal to num list, well, then what do I want to do? I'm going to go ahead and say, and this is a quick version just to show you. I'm going to say, okay, well, then set the text. Let me reset. Right here, set output area. And what am I going to set it equal to? I'll go ahead. I'm going to delete the quotes. It fights you on that sometimes. Uh, I'm going to set it equal to name list i. Because I know whatever number is at i here, that's the elevation for whatever name is also at that point, that index in this list. So let me make sure. Right now I run this here. Right To make a function run, you have to say a function's name. If I do this, my code never, ever, 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 ever runs. I created this cool block of code and I named it user input and the computer does not care. It is mean. I have to say the function's name. So I'm gonna grab this. I called mine user input. That might not make sense for you. You should make sure you're thinking of your own ideas. <laughs> but here's the function name for me, user input. Reset, run. All right, let me hit start. Okay, so now I know on the event that num input changes, user input will run. I'm gonna hit one, and then I'm gonna click off. Oh, and this is the first one that pops up. So it must have an elevation greater than one. It's probably that last item in the list because right now it's going through the full list and putting out everything. If I change this up, let me click. Oh, wow, let's see how tall that guy is, data. So right now it's looping through the entire list. Oh, this is a long list, Never mind. And it's gonna output whatever one's the tallest, which isn't exactly ideal. It works, right? It does, but I actually want it to list out all of my items. So to do that, I'm gonna make a new whole list thing. All right, so I also wanna make sure that it doesn't stop at number four. Right now, it only goes through the first four items of my list. So to make sure it doesn't go through just the first four items, I'm gonna say, okay, go through the whole list. To do that, I'll just say num list dot, or I could use over here, that string length, one that says list length, yes. So now I'll make sure to go through my whole num lists length. Okay, now it's gonna go through the whole list, but I still have the issue of it will only push one onto the screen. To take care of that, 
I'm going to do a new variable. And there's a different there's a few different ways we could do this, but I'll do a variable X and this is going to be um, answers, I guess. And I'm going to set it equal to empty string. Now what I want, though, is it to update itself. So inside of my loop here, if if number is less than or equal to numless i, right? So we're looking for any volcano that's at a higher elevation or any movie that came out after that year. I want answers to be equal to answers plus names, name list i. So at this point, I absolutely know that my volcano has a elevation that is greater than the number. It's greater than what the user entered, right? Because the user get the text the user entered, make it equal to number. Create this blank string answers. Now I use I and I loop through every item in the list one at a time. And I'm saying, OK, is the number the user entered less than or equal to the number in the list at point I? If it is, right? So maybe that number, that volcano has a higher elevation. Maybe your Netflix show has a higher release date, whatever it is. What I do then is like, okay, great. It's it's higher than the number they entered. So what I'll do is I'm going to say, okay, take my answers variable and make it equal to what it used to be equal to, but had that name to the list because I know the elevation of that volcano is higher than what the user had. Or add the name of my movie to the list because I know the release date was after. Okay, and now hit the bottom of the if. Great. Hit the bottom of our for loop. Go back around and check the next item in the list. If it also has an elevation greater than the number the user entered, well, then I'm still going to keep what I had before. Right. Answers is going to be equal to whatever answers used to be equal to plus that new name. So finally, after I smack all of those names onto this variable answers, I'm going to do set text. What do I want to set the text of this output area? And what do I want to set it to? Not text, but I have this variable called answers. All right, let's give all this a try. Volcano app start. All right, so I'm going to enter an elevation uh, 55 and I'm going to click off. Now, this should be an a a list of all the volcanoes with a higher elevation than that. What if I do 1500? Click off. Whoa, OK. It is a two, two, five. I don't know. I'm just getting and the list should be getting shorter. Well, that would make sense because I entered a ridiculous big number. How about that? OK, so 5000. Notice how short the list is now because it's slowly weaning itself down. Now, if we wanted to be fancy, eh, no, we don't. We could also do a new line. So to make sure we know which volcanoes are where or I guess we can. Answers, I'm going to do a new line character. So I'm going to do plus and then in quotes. This means like the enter key to a computer slash in. All right, let's reset and run. And I have to click off. And now I know each volcano has its own line, which is much better now, actually, that it's not all smushed. Now, woof, that's not that's not very many that are that tall. OK, and again, this would work with years and things of that nature. If you don't like the entering text and clicking off, you could always do your on event with a button as well. Right. So I could go over here. I could go into my main screen. I could put a button if I wanted. And then for my code, instead of just on change up here, it would be uh, whatever number button click. And once it clicks, it runs this loop and updates. Pretty cool, though. I want to do this one more time. I don't know. Let's see. 3,555. Click. Ooh. Make sure you continue to build on this, though, right? The hackathon is a really big project. An example of something you could add is you could use the equals equals operator to check if a user's input, I don't know, input name, if what they entered in the text box is exactly equal, well, to the name of a volcano. And if it is, I could use my elevation list and output the elevation of the volcano's name they typed in. And you want to keep going, making sure that you've met all of the criteria to fulfill your responsibilities on this. I'm excited to hear about all the cool apps you guys make.